Welcome to our voice. Today we have a pure got talent from Austria. She's a brilliant comedian, a writer, a producer, a vlogger, vlogger, <laughs> coach, and last but not least, a brilliant actress. Alice Frick, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Alice. How are you? Thank you. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. How does it feel to be in, in join the you know, Her Voice project? Um, great, because I'm very passionate about it. Okay. Uh, I think <laughs> it's, it's a great cause. <laughs> okay. So. Cool, cool. Thanks for joining us. Thank sure. you. Thanks Thank for you. having me. <laughs> uh, listen, I have some disturbing news today for you. Uh, you probably know that already, but I was reading the other day uh, a couple of uh, data regarding the uh, female actresses and the uh, situation of the uh, movie industry and for, for women. and. Uh, Going through these details, I read that uh, Mary Streep, she has won three Oscars and she still gets paid half of her uh, co-actors. And it's just, <laughs> and we're saying, I mean, we're talking about Mary Streep. Yeah. And so uh, there are, these are really disturbing news to me and I, and I really uh, struggle to understand. What, what do you think about it? Yeah, well, it's the old game between the the also with female directors and uh, and I think in general also for comedy it is mostly um, the white man between thirty and fifty who is on a comedy stage who is a, a film director and then also I think the problem is besides the inequality of payment but the stories that get that get told mm -hmm. are from these white male straight uh, perspective yeah. so all the movies we watch it's kind of like a, a little bit of a brainwash because we don't see the diversity in that mm. it's always the same that's structure true. that's true so does it happen to you that your t your art whatever you do from comedy to uh, writing to movies does it get compared only to what other females do or do you all also get compared to uh, men men work I think in general it is compared to other female work. Mm -hmm. I know for example for writers competition they sometimes have a competition where you don't write down your name so it's gender neutral mm -hmm. okay, because then they say uh, then they really compare the art because otherwise it's, uh, it's a woman who, who tries to write an action film or something and it's automatically <laughs> um, uh, judged yeah. by yeah. the gender. Mm -hmm. For comedy possibly as well um, and for acting you are, mm -hmm. as you see, f for example, at the Oscars, there is a category for male actors and for female actors, which probably is good because otherwise only the men actors would win. Yes. So at least <laughs> there is a chance <laughs> we have to have a female winner. You still winner. get paid half, but then again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And yeah, for comedy, I think because in comedy, most of the time, if you not on the open mic scene, but if you play in clubs where you get paid, yeah. <laughs> then you only have one female uh, performer. Most of them are men, if, if, they, if they have a female performer. Um, but if they have a female performer, I s not often find myself with more than one or with another one. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you are standing there for the female <laughs> comedian. So if you suck, female comedians suck and women are not funny. Yeah. And if you're... <laughs> so, uh, where I don't yeah. find the comparison is actually in all women's lineups. So if you have only women in a lineup, then people start getting away from the gender and focusing on the art and they then judge, well, I don't like a character comedian, for example, or I don't like musical comedy, I like stand-up. So then they really focus on the art okay. and judge the art instead of the comedian and uh, or the gender. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But has it ever happened to you? Uh, or, or do you have any any memory about once that has happened that you were treated differently because you're a woman in the I'm talking about the industry whatever it is of acting or doing comedy or yes um, one time for example I was touring a one woman show in Austria and the the guy who did the tech he he was doing the lights and he just uh, we were going through the lights mm -hmm. and he basically told me how I should finish the act. He said, like, at the end you should, you should do a period and then walk off stage. And I'm just like, wait, this is not my show. And who are you that you direct me last minute? You're, you're responsible for turning the light on and off and not telling me that I should do a period before I leave. And I think this would not have happened to a man. 
one time I did an interview in Edinburgh at the Fringe Festival, and the interviewer, he was just doing my hair and touching my hair. And I'm just like, hold on. <laughs> Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that you can touch my hair or my face or do any. No one would do with a man and say like, excuse me, you have something in it. What? I mean, so so it is it is a crazy thing. I think you, yeah, as a woman, they feel like they can do more with you or, or tell you more. Well, yeah, enough, yeah. But it, regarding your art, um, as you have been judged more as sexy than uh, purely based upon the art and the talent or describe um, the sexy or uh, well I, I have to go over my reviews probably to I try to not read the reviews <laughs> but probably there is a, you can find something there um, I know from a, I was performing in Germany and I observed it there because I performed in a quite famous club there mm -hmm. and I realized that the audience needs because I realized this with me and also by watching other female comedians, mm. the audience does look at the woman, at the women, they look up and down, they check out their clothes. So you need maybe a few minutes more than a man to warm up the audience because it's still, even though there are women on stage and we're used to it, but still the first joke doesn't work because they still check and say, oh, what is she wearing? Uh huh, okay. Mm. What shoes? Okay. Ah, oh, okay. She looks whatever, you know. So they do judge you no man, mm. they would say, oh, how does he, his bottom look? <laughs> and you do a period. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> does that in yeah. the beginning. So. Yeah. But um, do you think that from a different standpoint, uh, being a female can sometimes help or play in your favor? Um, yes, I do think exactly in that way too because there are not so many females so you can say you need a female in your show take me mm. but then again i think it's um i don't know if it's necessarily a favor or if it's um yeah i do think sometimes it is a favor that you are the only woman because also probably people remember you better or something okay. because they say like oh you were if there are five men and they all look the same yeah. When they walk out of the comedy club, nobody remembers them. But as a woman, they're like, ah, you are the one. Mm. But then on the other hand, I rather have equality then. And all, you know, when you, when you are charming or flirting with somebody, but at the end, you only get so far. And then to reach the top, they then choose a man. So it doesn't really help you to be seen as sexy or charming because yeah. <laughs> you only come <laughs> to... <laughs> point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, Okay, what if you were given unlimited power tomorrow to change things in the industry? What would you do? I would pay Meryl Streep. <laughs> <laughs> Meryl! No, she doesn't need money. I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe cut the half of the man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Cut the half of the. <laughs> um, yeah, I would. I would totally pay everyone the same amount. I would um, do. I would book for film. I would just get the quota regulation <laughs> in to say, okay, we have to have fifty-fifty <laughs> yeah. because we have to tell uh, a female perspective. Not that it's women's stories because women can make action movies, horror movies, thrillers, but probably not with a woman as a main lead, uh, not lead character, but the support character in a mini skirt uh, just for sexual purposes. But maybe. So I think that would change the whole society probably on how women look like. And so I would try to make this equal. And then I would probably, for comedy, I would probably do what I try to do with my own show, with Laughing Labia, where I have an all-female lineup, I would probably open it to men if it was equal. <laughs> um, yeah. And just try to get diversity out, because I think I am mostly inspired by diversity. Because, like I said before, I'm really bored by one person's story that is repetitive, and you have a white male between 30 and 50 who is straight and married and now has kids, they all have the same stories. And 
making jokes is not the most unique thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there are only a few possibilities how you can do the punchline. And mostly you can guess the punchline after you've seen a few of them. So I, I want to have uh, all kinds of color, all kinds of sizes, all kinds of people with disability, great, the best stories, all kinds of regions, you know. Yeah. Um, so I like diverse character act, musical act, other acts, crazy acts, whatever. Because then you can say, I don't like it, but then you have 10 other acts where you say, like, yeah. I like the others. So yeah, I like diversity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's say that tomorrow, what a great day it is tomorrow. <laughs> you are coming with so many things happening. <laughs> um, you are offered one billion pound for a lifetime contract, uh, acting contract, comedy contract, um, planetary fame. But you don't have control over the kind of art you are going to deliver. Would you accept? No. <laughs> um, no, I would you not say accept. No to one billion. Euros. I know, <laughs> but um, I have reasons for that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> because <sure. laughs> uh, if I wanted to make money, not that I don't want to make money with my art, but if I wanted to make money, I could have chosen another career. And I think to have a billion but do what other people tell you to do then it's the freedom of speech is gone you're dictated to do whatever and it is a it is a tough topic with a fine line because also i think probably everyone as an actress has sooner or later done a commercial for a product they don't buy or they don't want just because they got four thousand pounds with buyouts i would would i go for cigarettes and say like, hmm, amazing, even though I'm not a non-smoker <laughs> and don't support yeah. cancer or whatever, you know. But yeah, you sell your soul at one point, but I probably would not do it for a lifelong time. Mm -hmm. And I have, it is a funny story, but I have been uh, working for a man who has quite a lot of money because he wanted some interview training. So I went on a private plane with him, uh, I gave him yeah, this interview training and then I lived in a suite with two bathrooms wow. by myself, which is amazing, but I realized I don't need two bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, I, just you, no. It is nice though to have a bathroom that has a warm <laughs> toilet seat when you wake up in the night, <laughs> but I rather do what I, what I want to do and shit in a hole, you know, <laughs> probably would not enjoy that. <laughs> would dream of the toilet <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. okay yeah that, that makes sense absolutely but uh, is, is there a, a woman uh, that inspires you your female inspiration in your everyday life in your art i think i think there are a few i think probably for comedy of course ellen degeneres she she did it amazingly i think how she went her way through with this backlashes or she always stood up and continued and look at her now yeah. that's pretty cool to stand up for who you are I also like the filmmaker Deepa Mehta mm -hmm. um, she's an Indian a filmmaker that lives in Canada and she also does her thing even though she probably gets death threats because as an Indian doing a movie about a homosexual couple yeah. they destroyed her set while filming she had to start again you know but she was doing it she wanted to tell a story and an important story uh, or important stories and I really like this passion and I think there are her voice, everything that is supporting female artists or that has a <laughs> passion yeah, and wants to and get something out. <laughs> yes. So yeah, all of that, I think it's um, amazing and it's inspiring for me. Great. But um, describe your average day. Like, what, what do you do on, during the day? Write, uh, you do rehearsals, you... Uh, what, what, what's your average day? If you have an average day, <laughs> I doubt, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't have an average day, <laughs> that's true. Uh, most of the time I do get up. <laughs> wow. that's, that's a start. <laughs> that's a start. Um, it depends on, on what I'm working at the moment. I'm working on, a, on different little bits. I do some business acting. I shoot webinars for a business company, so they pay my money at the moment, which is nice. 
and um, I also work on a film project so it depends sometimes I wake up and go for location scouting because we need to get everything done mm -hmm. within the next uh, eight weeks because then we are shooting so we need the location we need the rest of the cast or if I'm in a writing process I just write mm -hmm. what I find also quite helpful is to um, meet up with other people when, for example, there is nothing to do on this day, officially nothing to do, but there's always something to do, mm -hmm. just to keep mm -hmm. motivated, go to writers' groups, just to sit next to each other and write, mm -hmm. because otherwise uh, it's so easy to lose structure and to lose faith sometimes when things don't move or get stuck, mm -hmm. so it's always good to get some inputs, motivation, or go to a museum and hear something, get frustrated because there are not enough women in museums, <laughs> go home and <laughs> change yeah, the world again. You were telling me about it, uh, the, about the, uh, there are like b barely women like in the, in the uh, National, um, National Museum or whatever. National Gallery, National three Gallery. female artists, because there are not more. <laughs> I guess there are, but they just not considered as men, yeah, yeah. Really, absolutely amazing. But is is there anything that you have a that you regret uh, not doing in your career? Anything that you say? Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess I go for Edith Piaf and say no, so I regret it. Just because it doesn't help. It doesn't help. I think. If I I look back and I probably regret a few things, like I said before. I find it pretty shit if you have to sell your soul to make money mm. and I did that too which I would probably not do again mm. but then on the other hand it pays money so yeah. it, it is hard to be idealistic when you have to pay bills <laughs> or when you drink wine <laughs> <laughs> so I think the best thing is um, to to try to whatever happens always it's an ideo ideology mm. but um, to not get affected and to just not regret and say, okay, it is what it is. Um, what can I learn from it and how can I develop and how can I use this in my art prob mm -hmm. probably. Okay. But um, what, what is it you're doing right now? Is there any specific project you're working on? Uh, or um, is there any shows around London are you doing or around the world? What will you tell us about your projects? Um, yeah, I'm doing, I'm working on a, a feature film at the moment. Mm -hmm. It will be shot in Vienna or in Austria. It's a German movie, but it will get subtitles. So we plan, <laughs> we plan it big. <laughs> um, it's a comedy with a female character as, a, uh, as the main character, because we are mostly women working on that movie. And <laughs> to <laughs> change that perspective. Then I have another movie in the drawer. It's about female genital mutilation, okay. uh, how it has also been done to Western women in the States until the 70s, which is a topic that nobody knows, that I'm really personal, angry again, and want to do something about it. But this movie is, the, you know, I, it, now the other movie took over, and we got actors for that, and so we have to, you basically have to put sometimes things in the drawer. Mm -hmm. So this is still there, uh, waiting for me to come back. Um, other than that, I do once a month Laughing Labia, the okay. comedy mixture, and just gig around wherever I can in between. Short shootings uh, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and interviews with, with great shows. <laughs> <coughs> and I also do a vlog called Alice in the Wonderland. <laughs> in the Wonderland. In the <laughs> So, okay, yeah, so these cool. are the things that I'm doing. Okay, is it on YouTube? Is there a YouTube It's channel? on YouTube, yeah. Okay, yeah. and what's the um, address? It's the, uh, on, on my YouTube name, Alice Frick, okay. and then it's called Alice in the Wonderland. Okay. I have to figure out the technical details with okay. technical okay. people. Okay, well, oh, we'll just Google it, <laughs> I'm sure it will come up. Okay, good. Um, now, last thing is, I know you're Alice Frick, you say you're Alice Frick, <laughs> you probably are, <laughs> oh, no. but still, I need a proof. Okay. Okay. So, um, how about you tell me a joke? Okay. <clears throat> well, I tell you a joke. Uh, a joke. Possibly because this is from a music magazine. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. So I actually wanted to become a musical comedian, okay. and I learned to play the saxophone. Mm. But then I realized blowing and playing doesn't really work together. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, I, I'm very lesbian. <laughs>
<laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, and some people, when I say I play the saxophone, they ask me, oh, you play the saxophone, what do you play, jazz or blues? I say, well, I play the scales. <laughs> <laughs> Not the big career. But I finally had my saxophone exam. Okay. You know, it was me and a lot of six year olds. <laughs> and I was I was I passed the exam, I passed it. Oh, that's good. With my masterpiece uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star <laughs> and the saxophone uh, examinator said to me, You have a really strong blow mm. and a great tonguing. Mm. <laughs> I was surprised about the blow. <laughs> I knew about the tonguing. <laughs> I think this is a great way to finish off. <laughs> yes, I think that was great. Thank you very much, Alice, for joining us. You're welcome. And, uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>